Dr. Dave Lexel and Mahime again. It's my coffee drink all day, every day. Um, anyway, this is the, the untold lies of Africa Africans. accept and give out or deliver orders on Saturdays. They do not get acknowledged if they are ordered on Sabbath, which is Saturday. Please order the Friday before midnight or the Sunday after midnight. Cue that music I like. I don't think twice. Just keep it out of my sight there. Well, bitch, don't kill my vibe. Oh, bitch, don't kill my vibe. Well, American privilege. Often people think about how European colonizers plunged and exploited Africa so ruthlessly. Where did they get the audacity from? How did the military officers and even royal kings of the colonial era murder millions of Africans without any regret? It turns out that it was due to the lies told about Africa and Africans. Being carefully engineered, these lies indoctrinated Europeans. Killing and torturing became easy as those powerful lies provided a good excuse. With time, those lies were added to literature and they found space in everyone's mind. Hence, whenever people think about black women slaves being tortured inhumanely, they find peace with it. But when they think about white women being treated less than human by black males, they shiver. Yes, that's how those lies have changed people's psyche. But what are those lies? Number one, Africans are uncivilized and backward. A common false idea about African people is that they were considered uncivilized, except for Egypt, which is often seen as separate from the rest of Africa. Since the world knows more about Egypt, its pyramids and archaeological evidence proving its rich civilization, European colonizers decided to cut it off from Africa. But the truth is, Egypt is a part of Africa and is only an example of many ancient civilizations Africa had. For example, civilizations like ancient Ghana in West Africa, even though they were wealthy and had a strong military, are often ignored. Many Muslim writers and historians wrote about them, but European colonizers either destroyed those records or hid them. Even old discoveries show ancient stone settlements that might have come before the Sudanic civilization in that area. Also, the artwork of the Edo people challenges the belief that Africans lacked intelligence, though some wrongly credited ancient European travelers for their achievements. Number two, Africa is a dark continent. People often wonder why Africa is sometimes referred to as the dark continent. Well, the carefully orchestrated usual answer is that Europeans didn't know much about Africa until the 19th century. But this explanation isn't completely accurate. In reality, Europeans had information about Africa for a very long time, around 2,000 years, from the time of Greek city-states and the Roman Empire. However, because they wanted more power and control, European leaders intentionally ignored what they already knew. During the 1800s, there were efforts against slavery, and attempts to spread religion through missionary work in Africa. Strangely, these efforts actually made Europeans hold even stronger biased ideas about African people. They started using the term dark continent to describe Africa, as they expected to find mysteries and savagery within its heart. However, the true story is quite different. Africa has a rich and ancient history that goes back many centuries. It all began when early humans appeared, followed by ancient humans and eventually modern humans, the Homo sapiens, around 200,000 years ago in East Africa. This history has continued without any breaks up to today, resulting in a varied mix of nations that are still growing and changing politically. This history can be seen in places like the Kingdom of Kush, ancient Egypt, the Sahel, the Maghreb, and the Horn of Africa. Yes, Africa and its civilization were there when no humans existed in the rest of the world. And they want to call Africa a dark continent. Well, that's ironic. The idea that Africa is a dark continent isn't true when we look at ancient civilizations like the Meroitic civilization and the important contributions of the Kushite rulers, sometimes called the African Renaissance. Great Zimbabwe, a big stone structure, is one example of an impressive stone structure in southern Africa, showing the accomplishments of the Shona civilization. Number three, Africa had no writing system. The way languages are used and written in Africa has led to misunderstanding. 
Because of colonialism, people often think African languages either have no written forms or have only been written recently. But this is not true. Africa actually has the oldest and largest collection of ancient writing systems in the world. These systems date back to even 7,000 years and can be found in different parts of the continent. In comparison, the oldest writing system in Europe, Greek, wasn't fully used until around 1400 BC, and even Greek writing seems to have been influenced by an older African script. The oldest writing in Asia, called Proto-Cuneiform, dates back to about 3000 BC. However, Africa's oldest known writing systems are even older than that. According to Dr. Clyde Winters, who wrote about ancient civilizations, there was a remarkable civilization in the fertile African Sahara, even before the well-known ancient Egyptian and Sumerian civilizations. In this region, people developed one of the earliest forms of writing we know of. There are inscriptions or writings that some experts call Proto-Saharan. These inscriptions are found near the Karga Oasis, west of what used to be called Nubia. These writings could date back as early as 5000 BC. This means that Africa has a deep history of writing systems that are much older than many people realize. European colonizers wanted to find English written on the rocks that dated back over 7,000 years. However, they ignored the writings by the Ikoi people of Nigeria, which used symbols and pictures to send messages. Many African writing forms were first made for specific groups, not for everyone. Like, Egyptian hieroglyphs were known only by the priests. The Songhai people had a secret writing form for a religious group and this was revealed to the public in 2010. We still can't read the Meroitic script of the Kushites, which stops us from fully understanding Queen Amenorina's interactions with the Romans. Even in Southern Africa, there are writing forms, like the mysterious one Joao de Barros found in Zimbabwe as part of the Muinamutapla Empire. However, we rarely hear about these discoveries today. Number four, African religions. When we think about people who have African roots, we can't forget about the Abrahamic religions like Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. These religions have been a big part of our history and have shaped how we think about spirituality and the world. This takes us to the greatest lie called the curse of Ham. This lie has been connected with a character from the Bible, also named Ham, to make the lie look correct. Ham is said to be the ancestor of all black or African people and that he was cursed. This idea was used by scholars from Jewish, Arab, and European backgrounds to try to make mistreating and enslaving African people seem okay. This lie doesn't just affect our understanding of history. It hurts people in deep ways, both physically and mentally. It even influenced our spiritual beliefs. Some people believe this lie was true, which caused them to feel confused. It's like an invisible enemy that's hard to prove wrong. Even though fewer people believe this lie now, its effects can still be felt because many of us grew up hearing it. Africans were a people with little to no strategy in warfare. The idea that African warfare was disorganized or lacked a plan is simply not true. Let us explain why. In the past, African societies had well-structured and smart ways of fighting battles using strategies and tactics. For instance, the Zulu warriors used a special strategy called the bullhorn formation, which shows how organized and clever their warfare was. In this tactic, the army would divide into three sections. One would stay at the center while the remaining two factions would act like horns blocking the enemy forces from left and right, completely overpowering them. African kingdoms that were doing well depended a lot on their skilled warriors and strong military. They needed these forces to keep their people safe and also to expand their territories. Having a powerful and organized military was crucial for their survival and progress. The strength of these ancient African kingdoms was often judged by how strong their military was. If a kingdom had a really strong army, it not only protected them from bigger kingdoms, but also made smaller neighboring kingdoms scared of them. This kind of dominance continued for many years and helped these bigger kingdoms stay powerful and influential. One of the earliest examples of organized African armies comes from ancient Egypt, one of the oldest civilizations in Africa. But it's not just Egypt. Other African kingdoms also had impressive warriors. Take the Somalian Mali empires, for example. They had one of the most powerful armies on the planet at that time. And here's something interesting. Egypt is the oldest civilization. Archaeologists have found evidence of the oldest known monarchy in human history. This discovery comes from ancient Nubia, a region in Africa that existed in what is now northern Sudan and southern Egypt. This Nubian culture predates the rise of the earliest Egyptian kings by quite a few generations, being over 5,000 years old. 
Before this discovery, people thought that ancient Nubia was made up of different tribal groups and chiefdoms that were not very advanced. But now, we know that they had something more developed, a system of kings ruling over their lands. Having kings means that they had a more organized way of governing. Instead of just separate chiefdoms, they were united under a powerful and wealthy ruler. This suggests a higher level of political organization. This finding is really important because it might change how we think about the beginnings of civilization in Africa. It raises a question. Could some of the advanced political systems of later Egyptian culture have actually come from the Nubians? Well, it might be the case. The new evidence hints that the ancient Nubians might have reached an advanced level of political development as far back as 3300 BC. That's even before the earliest known Egyptian king. This discovery is shaking up our understanding of early civilizations and how they developed in Africa. Do you think these lies have already done irreparable harm to black people? How should the white people of today react to them as they too believed in these lies?